The content here will give you the ability to create beautiful scenes of nature's fascinations, from rainstorms to fog to snow and other such effects within Blender, using volumetric presets and particle effects to give life to nature's wonders within your scenes. This tutorial is going to be covering how to use the little pack of weather particle effects created in order to replicate several types of obviously weather. Several of these particle effects, you've got how many spawn, you've got the start times, the end times. There's no need to cover every single one of them. You can see in the previews here what the particle effects look like for the rain, the snow, the other effects. So for the most part, just some basic knowledge of how particle effects work will give you enough insight to use them and change them to your requirements. Of course, if you have a location they need to be in, you can move them around. You can change the size, the shape, the scale of the model which is emitting them. And the particle effects will adjust their spawning locations in order to suit what you've set. And for several effects, such as this snow and the rain, if you rotate it, it will start coming down at an angle. That could be quite useful, such as if your scene is trying to replicate a sense of there being a very strong wind. In the rain effects, for instance, there are two particle effects that work together. These two particle effects working together aid in giving it a sense of realism, of organic motion. You should also note that for these snow particle effects, or perhaps hail, however you decide to use them, they fade out and disappear by their scale being adjusted until they are invisible. The idea here isn't that they should be hitting the ground as they disappear down here. The idea is that they hit the ground around halfway down. So perhaps something like around here. And then the intention is for you to have a 2D plane or map geometry, whatever you use, with a collision modifier active, with damping set to max, friction set to max. This means that when the snow particle lands on your ground, they don't instantly disappear. They hang around for a few moments, but not indefinitely, as they fade away and disappear. This is meant to be used alongside the snow texture, which is also provided. By default, it looks like this black plane because I have removed the textures from the Blender file itself to avoid unnecessary bloat of the file size. But it's pretty easy to put them in. You just click on the button to enter into the group and find these four nodes here. Snow normal, snow bump, specular and color. And then from the materials which were provided with this, you just have to go to each of them and find the color, put it into color, find specular, put it in specular, and the other two, bump and normal. Now we have a finished snow texture now that these have been put back into their place. You can affect the uh, distance and strength of the normal, as well as the roughness of the surface, to give you a more shiny or less shiny result, depending on what effect you're going for. There's no need for me to cover the intricacies of the rain particles, since they follow the same logic as the snow. But do note that this rain splash effect is intended to be placed on the ground where the other rain particles are landing. This gives the impression that the rain is hitting the ground and splashing up off rain off the surface. You get the idea. This shader here, the one intended to give the impression of puddles and ripples forming on the surface, is intended to be used with a second texture of your own design. You can see here a rainy surface with a texture input. What's intended is that whatever texture you personally want to use, be it for a concrete road or a cobblestone path, should be inserted to the texture input. And now, although the lighting conditions in this preview aren't ideal, you can more get the idea of how it's intended to look. We can turn up the morph speed to change how viciously it appears that the raindrops are falling, and also, of course, adjust the scale. As I say, the lighting conditions aren't ideal, but you can see here in the renders how this can look when properly worked with. A note about these raindrops is the textures that they use. Just as the splashing surfaces are intended to be used with your own texture, and they're not supposed to just have a generated color instead, the same is true of the raindrops. They come with a default blue color, which of course is workable. But the intention here is that you put whatever skybox settings you have, whatever world shader settings you have, into this texture here. 
So perhaps if you have a HDIR or a generated sky texture, this can also be put into here, into this, with the emission strength modified to whatever you need. And then the raindrop will show reflections of your skybox, of your world shader, within each drip, rather than just showing a default flat color. The lightning effect is one of the easiest and simplest effects to use in this pack. Just be sure you give it a plenty of space, since well, lightning strikes tend to be fairly big. If it looks white like this, you can see the other objects here which the lightning is made from. If they look like this, white and strange, make sure to go down to your render properties, find bloom and enable it, to allow that sparky brightness to shine out at you with its invigorating gleam. These use a randomized color, which allows them to have these different shades dynamically, but you can override this with your own color by putting color override to one and then whatever you want to put in here. Perhaps this red color would look fancy. And you can turn down the emission to whatever you need it to. It all has pretty nice amounts of control. I mean, you can even just plug in a gradient texture or a uh, animated texture, whatever you need. Lastly, we come to this ground fog. Now, this actually serves several purposes at once. You can set and change the color, as you'd expect. You can change the density of the fog. You can change its fall off to be thicker or lower upon the ground. If you view this with overlays enabled, you can see that you can uh, move it by scaling the object, rotating it around, and standard functions. But what this also comes with is a toggle for the rain effect. Now, you can see here in this preview on the ground, you have the rain falling, you have the rain splashing. You also have this kind of subtle effect moving around it, which the scene would be lacking something if it wasn't there. And that is the rain toggle. You get this slider here, fog rain toggle. On the left it's fog, on the right it's rain toggle. If we put this up to one, we see these gaps appearing. And these gaps replicate the splashings of small particles of water that emerge when a raindrop hits a wet surface. If I go through it, you can't exactly see in this preview very easily, because all of this fog is actually animated and is moving slowly. You can change the speed if you want to, have it moving much faster, but the defaults are pretty good for what I've found. And as before, you can scan up the size to make the uh, splashes smaller. But again, 4 for me was a pretty nice effect. By placing this on a surface beneath falling raindrops, alongside a splashing particle effect, on a surface which has the rippling effects of a wet surface being splashed on, then you're already halfway to getting results that look like this, or perhaps even better. Speaking of halfway, the other half is your environmental settings and lighting. Have you got a good lighting for your scene to accompany the weather you're trying to portray? Do you have your environmental fog set up well? If you're not sure how to do this yourself, there's also an addition to this. We also have the addition of a set of preset scenes, scenes that have already been made with all of these particles set up. The rain effects, the snow effects, the thunderstorm. Each preset scene with its own lighting and environmental fog, as well as the several particles set up and ready to use. If you don't want to put all these particle effects and lighting together yourself, my advice would be to just make a copy and paste of the default scenes, Delete the stuff out you don't need, such as the cityscape used to preview it, and start putting in your own assets, or you're building your own scene. That way the particle effects are already set up and ready to go, alongside the lighting and environmental fog effects, again, ready and set up to go. The presets not only allow you to create nature's wonders within Blender, they also allow you to set everything up straight away, with all the settings and tweaks fleshed out and ready to go, ready to use, ready for your creative imagination and the freedom that Blender gives you.